Good morning, people. <laughs> it is 6.55 on 8.24.21, August 24th, 2021. Money don't walk, gotta go out here and get it. But anyway, um, after the last message on <laughs> After the last message on what do people get when they get you, some thoughts came to mind. I was talking with my sister, and she said something that just resonated with me. She said, until you are in a long-term relationship where you are safe, And, and I want to qualify safe. That's why I pause. But where you are safe to communicate, to grow, then you will never see yourself. I recognize how she explained that she was not comfortable with... I guess it's not too personal. We're going shooting because when we were kids, our dad would let us shoot the rifle, but it had so much kickback, you know, it, it, it kind of hurt <laughs> with the kickback on the gun. And so that was, a, you know, a challenge to go shooting with her husband and she recognized that it was a her thing about going shooting. And she just said, you know what? It's gonna be a good day. She spoke over the situation. I love my husband. We're gonna do this together. And the day just turned out being a good day. Long story short, without all the details, but I, I, I look at number one, the safety. Okay, the safety is not always going to be a comfortable thing, but you know the person, you recognize the character of the person consistently enough to say, hey, this person doesn't have bad intentions for me. Sometimes people aren't safe with themselves because they have so much guilt going on in their head about what they think you're thinking versus what you're really thinking. And everybody's not comfortable with themselves, which is not a healthy mental state to be in to be in a relationship which people don't necessarily know because they just going through or maybe just stuck in an emotional wave <laughs> in the reference to wave ref reference to waters you know being on the water is being under a lot of emotions so when somebody says keep your head above water it means keep your head above the emotions that means think clearly which all relates because if we can't think clearly or objectively, and it, it, sometimes we do have panic moments, or sometimes we do have moments of confusion and lack of clarity, which can create emotions, not good emotions, but at the same time, we can get to a point of taking a breath, blowing it out, taking a breath, it's okay. It's going to be okay. All is well. And sorry, my morning alarm and confession came on. But it was just like, you know what? I have to learn me enough to say, this is my issue. This has been me in the past uh, relationships or relationship this is this is my trigger this is the root of my trigger and sometimes counseling help to bring that out or talking to somebody that you can listen to helps events that nature in you and I want to say, can you really recognize, can you really be honest enough with yourself to say, this is what people get when they get me? 
and I'm willing to grow beyond this childish behavior. And even if you don't want to label it childish, this lack of, uh, that's the word I'm looking for. It's not compromising. This lack of behavior that makes the relationship better for, for lack of a better word. So, I just look at can you really see yourself if you never apologize do you recognize how selfish you are if you've never gotten a person a gift ever and they're always gifting you you're selfish not even a happy birthday happy whatever day Merry Christmas Thanksgiving whatever you selfish and sometimes you don't see it because you so wrapped up in what you got going on but that's why it takes other people to be around you to show you that other side of yourself because you got four parts of yourself you got the part of yourself that you know and everybody else knows you got the part of yourself that you know and nobody else knows you got a part of yourself that everybody else sees but you don't see and then you got that final part where no one knows and you don't know so those are the four parts of yourself i forgot it, it was in science class as a kid or yeah i forget which one maybe it was psychology who knows maybe it was in college anyway as we entertain different relationships and it doesn't have to be a, 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 a boyfriend girlfriend husband wife deeply intimately involved it can be your best friend God didn't create us to be antisocial or he created us to be in communities so we can commune together take communion and when we have issues that prevent us from truly connecting, it's usually a us issue, whether a childhood trigger or something we never figured out. We have to recognize what is us and not deflect and put it on other people. Another time, are you just fair weather? It's two parts to it. Like one part is, are you a fair weather friend? If things aren't good, then you don't want to be involved. And sometimes we need a minute. It's just, it's just preface by saying sometimes people just need a minute to to, to be okay. And in certain relationships, even if you're not okay, it should be okay. For them to try to comfort you or help you through certain life challenges especially if the life challenge doesn't necessarily involve them and then like are you only good when life is good like can you handle the pressures and trials of life as they come at you can you still walk in love even though your car just broke down? I mean, the car is not the end of the world. It's not like your child in the hospital or something like that. That's something different. That could be a little bit more traumatic, but uh, you know, something life threatening. But I'm saying, like, you know, if, if you're physically okay, and for the most part, mentally okay, are you? I guess I'm saying, are you mentally healthy enough to be tested by the fire and get the reward of life? First Corinthians 3. Are you okay enough to mentally healthy enough to recognize that challenges are arising? And what that mean, what does that mean spiritually? Number one, God's trying to get your attention. Number two, change is imminent. Meaning, 
there usually when a lot of stuff starts going on there's some change going on spiritually mentally financially emotionally there's some usually and it's usually a promotion that I've experienced when a lot of change occurs and I've recognized that Sometimes I I have not seen the promotion or I've been underwater <laughs> in my feelings or emotions where I've just lost the promotion because I I want to be comforted more than I want to go through. I'm being honest. I'm not perfect. <laughs> I'm not even trying to be perfect anymore. But I am trying to improve. I am improving. No trying. life you either do it or you don't I'm improving I'm catching myself more as I evolve into this better me that God is crafting and perfecting and showing me at the same time first Corinthians 13 my favorite verse about love when I was a child or verses when I was a child I spoke as a child I thought as a child I understood as a child. Speak, understand, thought. Speak, speak, think, understand. And when I became more mature, when I became a man or a woman, I put away childish things. When I grew up, I put away childish things. First, I see myself dimly as in a mirror. But then, clearly, I see myself as I am known. To me, that is the ultimate love. To be shown yourself as you are known. So that you can make the decision to say, hey, I'm, I'm doing okay. I would like to receive this type of energy that I'm putting out. Or, mm, I don't like what I see in the mirror. I noticed for years that I didn't like what I saw in the mirror. And this is all about what people are getting when they get you. I didn't like what I saw in the mirror. I not only the childhood stigma that I had that I was not physically attractive but which was an esteem issue but it was also the character that I was presenting that I didn't like it went from being with anyone who liked me Never truly choosing the person that I really wanted to be with all the time. Let me say that. <laughs> Some of them I did choose that I want to be with. But sometimes it was just like, oh, you like me? Okay, cool. Or the <laughs> years of cheating, no matter what side I was on, <laughs> the other man, or having multiple partners and just doing so much for everybody else that I didn't do anything for myself and I wouldn't allow people to do things for myself because I was like I, I never felt worthy enough to receive and let me tell you something as a child of God as a person on this earth you do deserve to receive good I mean why if everything has to come from your work, then what about when you retire? I mean, I don't know. How can life ever be fulfilling if everything has to be earned all the time? But will you ever be able to receive a gift? Will you ever be able to receive a compliment? Will you ever be able to receive that you are improving? Or is your ego so big that it has to be my glory instead of God's glory? What story are you unfolding to people as you entertain and exchange energy with them? What ship, what type of ship are people entering with you as they relate with you? Relationship, yeah. But I recognize that the ship only gets better when you improve as a person.
because as you improve, you attract energy that is on that level of improvement. If you are used to being used and abused, you will attract people who use and abuse you. And sometimes you will do some of the same stuff that people are doing to you that you don't like. Because we are all guards receiving the inputs of life. We may not receive gifts, but we do receive the energy when we're not conscious of what we're exposing ourselves to. And I like to throw this in. I, I let the Holy Spirit figure out how it relates, but it just popped in my head. I was listening to Bishop Jakes yesterday when he said, Oh, and I just lost it. Oh, well. That, I guess is what I get for trying to give folks credit just instead of saying it and then give them credit afterward. And, yes, that's part of what people get when they get me. <laughs> Sometimes I get distracted and I lose my thoughts. And I'm still really trying to figure out what was that point of power that I was trying to make. I know the sermon, though. The sermon was uh, updated. And I'll tie that in. and Maybe it'll come back to me. But it was like, in your relationships, are you updating with each other? Are you growing together? And I'm not just talking about, you know, wife and husband. I'm talking about like with your friends, are y'all growing together? I have some friends with whom I don't, I, I mean, that I grew up with as a child that I, I, we don't entertain each other as we used to. And I, it's, it's not a, 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 a vertical move. It's just a lateral move where we're just not exchanging like we used to for whatever reason. But I recognize sometimes in relationships, the communication piece is so limited that we don't tell each other where we are, what we're doing. And we let people guess. And as you guess, you don't always make the right assumptions. Some of y'all know what assumption means, but I... I do my best to keep people from guessing where I am because I know how that feels. I used to like really in my 20s, oh my God, it was like, and a part of it was low self-esteem. It's like, I used to really worry about how people felt about me and what they were thinking. I mean, even in asking, sometimes the communication just wasn't there. Whether people felt safe or not. That's a whole other story, but it, it just, a lot of the communication wasn't there to say, hey, this is how I'm feeling. This is what I'm thinking. And it takes a mature person and a, and a whole person to be able to communicate, this is where I am. This is who I, this is, this is how I feel about you. And some people just, they're not, talkative and don't just come out and sometimes some prodding is needed or questions are need to be asked in order to get the communication that you want about the situation but I recognize for me I don't want people to guess like this how I feel good bad and different this how I feel you know now I'm tactful in business deals, when I think you like when I'm like when I want to say you sorry, you know I don't say that. I, I just say I mean you're not meeting my expectation. You can you can always clean it up. You don't always have to go for the juggler. And it's amazing how <laughs> so many of us have been trained in the. Uh, 
the attack versus speaking speaking things that be not as though they were. That's why we got to renew our mind to things that are more effective. One of the one of the most powerful things you can do in love is hope the best, which involves I'm gonna speak over you, okay. Even self love, like I was twenty pounds heavier than I am right now, most ever weight in my life, and part of it, a big part of it, was binge eating. Oh my god, did I leave that? I got it. Um was binge eating and I, I I am a cookie monster bring some chocolate cook, cookies my way you better get out the way I'm gonna get one of them but I that was part of my medication I just, especially during those times of what I call at, at the growth where I was at that point of not being in a relationship, it's like not dating anybody, just going through that that season of being to myself. I was, I was popping cookies like crazy. Whereas I don't I don't do it as much. Now sometimes I celebrate with some cookies, but I don't I don't uh, binge on cookies as much as I used to. But I will eat some cookies. I'm not, you know. But I'm getting sidetracked. But I had to recognize that that's you know I was an emotional shopper, and it wasn't always for me. Sometimes I would just shop for my kids or shop for my mate at, at the time, or even like with two, I would purchase. It's just a lot of different stuff that I would do as I'm medicated. And I had to realize that's not always the best thing to do. <sighs> Looking at um the debt that is created when you shop <laughs> shop like that oh my god oh my god oh lord i never forget i had a 1966 gto it was a graduation present for getting a full scholarship to school and i was i was in my 30s i, I mean I, so obviously i got it when i was like 18 or so and I was in my thirties when I had gone through a divorce and <sighs> I was financially well before it. I mean, I didn't even think about me saving money and spending money and I didn't even think I ain't I never looked at how much something cost because it was just like shoot. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care. I'm gonna buy it. I got it. And I mostly spent cash for everything. But anyway, needless to say, I was financially stable. And so after the divorce, those spending habits did not necessarily change. And I had to recognize hey, look. <sighs> I can't spend like this no more. So I had to, I was looking at my kids and my daughter was staying with me at the time. I was a single father. And let me, let me, let's, let's talk about being single. And this is what people would get when they get you. You ain't, you ain't the only, it's rare that it's just one person raising a child. Yes, they may go home with you primarily, but you got a friend, you got relatives. I ain't even gonna say just your mom and daddy. You know, maybe an auntie, a sister, or whatever that's helping you raise your child or helping you with time to impart into your child. So 
you're not the only it's a lot of single parents that want to say hey you know i did this no you didn't no you didn't you you didn't you didn't do all you didn't do it all by yourself and i'm not saying that people don't do that at all but it's rare that somebody is totally a single parent and sometimes people like that attention of saying hey you know went through this yeah like what rite of passage is it really it's almost like people bragging about how they've been to jail or whatever so i mean like a woman's rite of passage is i i, I have a baby daddy or i'm not with the father of my child and the man's rite of passage is you know i'm, I'm i've been to jail or you know i used to be a gang banger or you know something negative let's get it is negative. It is not the ideal state. It's not. But it happens. It is life. And this is another thing that came out. Why are we so on the negative stuff that happens? Like, look at these TV shows and social media. And drama. Drama is so embedded in our society. Yes, it is entertaining, but at the same time, like, it's not how life's supposed to be. And sometimes looking at the person, even with the trials that they may go through, it's, it doesn't sell. I, and I don't know if it's because of how people market it, because a lot of times we just sheep heard it along. Tell a vision, TV, social media, the evolution of, you know, getting you to away from the vision being told or the vision you being sold. So, look at the full circle of you. What implants were embedded in your head when you were a child? What did you catch? What are you seeing? What are you taking in what are you receiving what are you not receiving what is being imparted into you how are you being transformed are you being transformed these are things to think about where do you really want to be what do you really want to be in life do you want to be constantly that person going from relationship to relationship do you want to just stop going through and just be patient? Anyway. Y'all need to figure it out. What's in you? What are you giving? What do you want? In Jesus' name, never be the same.